Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to grab a seat. I'm going to do a quick presentation uh, and kind of go through the format uh, of how we're going to go through this tonight. Um, so if uh, if everyone's ready, I'll uh, I'll make a start. So good evening. I'm uh, Steve Buckley. Um, I am the interim director for Public Works, um, and as you all know, we're here for uh, Spurk Road um, Improvement Project, uh, which is scheduled to start um, next year for construction. I'll go through the timeline a little bit, um, but I think a lot of you are, are aware. So I'll try and speak if you can't hear the back. Um, are you a lot of you aware of, of uh, you know some of the challenges that we've we've had out in this uh, on this section of road? Um, and I think a lot of you will probably think this has been a long time coming, um, and it has. This has been uh, something that we've been working on for, for a while. Um, so just uh, a quick agenda for what we're going to do tonight. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the team that we've got here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to do an overview of the project, so what it entails, uh, and what we hope to achieve out of it. Uh, there's several existing issues which has uh, kind of led to this project. Uh, I think many of you are going to be aware of those. Uh, the primary goals of the project, uh, the scope and phasing of the project, uh, the timeline, and then at the end we're going to have uh, discussion and community feedback which will involve, um, as you already probably noticed, we've got all the plans laid out. Um, so that's going to be a great opportunity for you guys to go through, have a really good look at everything that we've, we've designed so far. Um, and if you have any issues, concerns, comments, uh, that'll be a time to, to say them and uh, the team will be here to hopefully answer. And if we can't answer anything today, uh, we'll be able to get back to you at a, at a later date. One second. <laughs> Okay, so the team, uh, so this is a collaboration between the town of Scarborough and St. Germain, who are the design engineers for this project. Uh, so from the town, uh, I've got myself, Steve Buckley, uh, as I said, I'm the interim director for Public Works. Uh, I think many of you probably knew Mike Shaw, uh, he retired, uh, so I'm, I'm currently filling in for that position. And uh, then we've got uh, Angela Blanchett, who's the town engineer. Uh, and we have an engineer over here, who's also from Public Works, and we'll be taking some notes and also available for questions um, and there's a sign-in sheet going around. Uh, if uh, we could, everyone could write their name and email address, an email address, um, that way we get a, an attendance attendance list. Um, and if there's anything that we need to follow up on, we'll um, make sure we have we, we generate a mailing list from that. Um, if there's anything we need to follow up on. Uh, so for Saint Germain, uh, we've got Patrick Gear, who's uh, the lead design engineer, and then uh, John Mahefka, who's uh, the support engineer, uh, design engineer. So an overview of the project, uh, so Spurlink Road, uh, also known as Route uh, 77, is a, highly, is a heavily used road uh, for both vehicle traffic and pedestrian and bike um, traffic. Uh, there's a large amount of heavy trucks um, and uh, other heavy vehicles that go back and forth uh, along that for, for getting to Cape Elizabeth. Um, 2005 transportation study identified the need for pedestrian cycle amenities, so this has been uh, a long time in, in the making. Uh, Spurlink Road uh, mm -hmm. is identified as one of the busiest cycle routes in southern Maine. Uh, this is, comes from uh, GP Cog, uh, and pretty much any time you're out there, you're going to notice there's, there's a lot of cyclists. Uh, the current railroad layout is not really suitable for cyclists or pedestrians. We only have two foot shoulders. Um, and in a lot of places, it's not even that. Um, so this forces pedestrians and cyclists to, to share the roads with what is often heavy traffic, um, you know, going at uh, uh, pretty fast. So. Uh, several areas along the road have some pretty uh, severe visibility issues, uh, especially um, the corner down uh, just beyond Acorn Lane, um, if you're coming in towards Scarborough, anyone that's that's on that section, you can't really see them until you ride up on them. Um, I think it's I've I've never cycled or walked along there, but certainly as a driver along there, it's uh, it's it's pretty uh, pretty scary going around there and and um, suddenly coming upon a cyclist or a pedestrian. Uh, we've also got uh, some pretty uh, major um, line of sight issues at the Sawyer Road intersection. Uh, this is a it's a challenging intersection. Um, to deal with, but uh, part of this project we're going to try uh, and improve the, the site distance. 
Um, it probably will still not be uh, the greatest sight distance, but hopefully we'll, we're going to end up with something that's, that's better than it is right now. Uh, turning left out of that intersection is, um, well, you're taking your, your life into your own hands, really, because you only see maybe 100 feet if, if you're lucky. Uh, there are also a couple of areas along this uh, section of road that uh, there are only a few feel above sea level currently. Um, so they are going to be impacted by sea level rise in the future. So part of this project is to address those areas and, and raise the road uh, and improve drainage in those areas so that we, we're not getting flooding in the future. Uh, so I've already kind of talked about some of the existing issues. So this is the uh, one of the blind corners that I, I spoke of. Um, so really, your visibility as soon as you get onto that corner is, is very poor. Uh, and any cyclist on, on either side uh, or pedestrian on either side of the road is, um, you know, the, you're not going to see them until you ride upon them. Um, and also, I talked about the, we've only got right now, got a two, uh, two foot shoulder. So everyone has to share the same, same lane. Uh, so there's a section along through here, um, through Birch Lane, uh, that has, uh, it's, it's low elevation. There is uh, potential risk in the future of flooding. Um, so this is an area that we're going to look at um, doing some uh, raising of the road. Um, and also as part of this project, there's several culverts along the road that will have to be replaced. Uh, the other issue, um, heavy traffic. Um, there's a lot of dump trucks that go up and down this road constantly uh, and a variety of other um, heavy trucks going in and out of Cape Elizabeth. And finally, for the, kind of the major issues, this is the, the view from um, Sawyer Street, pulling out of Sawyer Street, looking right. Um, if you're turning right, it's not too much of an issue, but anyone trying to turn left is I, as I said, it's about 100 feet, um, if you're lucky. Um, so the, the, the idea here would be that we would raise, uh, uh, sorry, lower the, uh, the top of that hill a little bit so that that gives a bit more sight distance for everyone pulling out of there. Uh, so the primary goals are improve pedestrian um, and cyclist safety. Uh, that's, that's kind of one of the, the main complaints that we get along this road um, is, you know, just how dangerous it is for, for people, um, you know, cyclists and pedestrians. Um, we get the vertical alignment issues um, and sight distance at the uh, Sawyer intersection. Um, and as part of that, we're also looking to improve uh, the climate resilience for, for this whole section of road. Um, it's obviously a coastal road. Um, so it is uh, a couple of sections that are, are at risk. Uh, and finally, fixed drainage issues. As I said, there are several culverts along that road that are um, pretty, uh, pretty old and need, need replacing. Uh, the good news is that um, the, the deep ones that are kind of in the middle section, those are in pretty good shape. Uh, but there are several um, along there that will need replacing. Uh, so the scope and phasing of the project. So the project is going to be split into two phases, uh, and it will go from Ocean Ave uh, to the town line at uh, the Spurring River. Um, phase one will be um, what we're going to be doing next year, um, and that's going to include the area from Ocean Avenue to Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, and along this section, we're going to be adding a sidewalk uh, from the existing sidewalk that we added uh, a couple of years ago from um, Ocean Ave to Acorn Lane. Um, so we're going to extend that now. It's going to go from Acorn Lane all the way to Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, there will also be the addition of four foot bike lanes on both sides of the road, uh, giving a lot more room for, for cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, and this is a section where we'll be raising part of the road to prevent future flooding. And also there are several culverts in this section that we'll need replacing. Uh, phase two of the project will uh, be in 2024, most likely. Um, and on this section, there'll be four foot bike lanes uh, along the entire length. And this is gonna run from Pleasant Hill Road to the Spurring River. Uh, and the other uh, kind of main thing for this one is replacing some of the old pipes in that section uh, and improving the vertical alignment at Sawyer Street. Uh, 
So I don't know how clear you can see this, but this kind of gives a, um, a rough idea of the phasing. So we've got uh, Ocean Avenue down here, uh, Acorn Lane, and then uh, Pleasant Hill Road is up here. So this is gonna be phase one. And then phase two is gonna be from Pleasant Hill uh, all the way to uh, this uh, uh, Spurwink River. So these are the proposed cross sections. Uh, so this is for phase one. So that's going from Ocean Avenue uh, to Pleasant Hill Road. So we've got a, a five foot uh, sidewalk. Um, actually, sorry, we, it's five foot bike lane as well on that side. Uh, two 11 foot travel lanes, uh, a four foot bike lane on the other side and then a two foot shoulder. And then the cross section for phase two, uh, so from Pleasant Hill Road to the Spurrink River, we will have the four foot bike lanes on either side, uh, as well as the two foot shoulder, and then again, the 11 foot travel lanes in either direction. So timeline for this project, um, we initially started the design uh, last year. Um, we partnered with St. Germain in June uh, or July, which I think it was, of, of last year. Um, and they spent all of last year coming up with the initial design, um, which is what we have in front of us today. Um, and they also came up with a cost estimate for the project. Uh, that was all submitted to council for uh, FY23 budget. So that'll start uh, on Friday, uh, on July 1st. Uh, so that was the funding for phase one was approved by the council in May of this year. Um, and now we're obviously in June 2022, so the public meeting. Uh, the next stage as part of this, we're hoping to get uh, some good feedback from, from everyone and, and suggestions. And we will take away that, that feedback. Um, and St. Germain and ourselves will work on a final design. Uh, once we have the final design uh, in fall of this year, uh, we'll be putting the phase one construction uh, out to bid uh, and awarding uh, the contract to uh, the successful bidder. Uh, for construction of phase one, we're looking at either spring or fall, I'm hoping spring, um, of 2023. Uh, we, for obvious reasons, are gonna try and avoid uh, the height of, of summer um, and so it, it will either be spring or fall of next year. Um, also going on at the same time for next year, we'll be putting in for phase two uh, funding for, from the council for FY24. Um, and assuming that that's all approved, which uh, we certainly hope it will be, um, same timeline uh, for, uh, for phase one, phase two will be put out to bid in uh, fall of 2023 and then it will be constructed in either spring or fall of 2024. Uh, so that concludes my short presentation. Um, the format that we uh, have set up for tonight is uh, the project starts here. So this, uh, this, work, this plan goes from Ocean Avenue to just around the corner. And then as you work your way back, um, you work your way down from Ocean Avenue to um, the Spurling River. Uh, we also have a couple of the intersection plans uh, zoomed in so you can see the, the POTUS intersection uh, layout. Uh, and so what we, what we suggest uh, everyone does um, is if there are questions or concerns um, or comments, you can uh, use highlighters or, or ask us to, to mark out on the plans. Um, there are several areas where we have some right-of-way conflicts. Um, so if um, we'll try and make those, we'll try and mark those up as we're going around. Uh, and if you're one of those property owners with those um, in here tonight, we can discuss uh, kind of what the proposed um, solution is and, and what uh, um, where, where the road will, will end up once it's finished. Uh, so with that, I will conclude my presentation. So thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much for coming. Um, and yeah, uh, please uh, start looking at the plans. Can I have a question? Yeah, sure. I'll take a card. Uh, going back to the, um, going back to the uh, width of the proposed 
roads, you know what the width of the road is now, that you're putting in an 11 foot road plus plus bike lanes plus sidewalks, what's the width now? Yeah, are we 24 feet right now? Yeah. Yeah. So right now it's 24 feet. So 24 and yes. then it'll be another, uh, yeah. so two, two less, yeah, so another how much? 11. And no sidewalks between Pleasant Hill and the river? Correct. Uh, I think there's another question. Down. Oh, I think, yeah. Um, my fear with widening the road that the cars drive on is people exceed the speed limit by 10, 15 miles an hour now. I mean, and um, it's dangerous walking, biking, anything next to the road and those dump trucks and so forth probably go 55 miles an hour down the program. So you make a wider road, you will go faster. So the, the travel lane themselves are going to be Current, really narrow. They've had a four where they tidy your speed <coughs> on that between Birch and Acorn. Well, they took that down um, years ago, but <coughs> there was at one point trying to see how fast people are going. They go fast. Yeah, I, I, I hope with, so right now the lanes are uh, 12 feet, so by narrowing those down and giving more room for cyclists and pedestrians, uh, we're hoping that'll help both calm, calm some of the speed limits and also give, give people a lot more room than they have right now. Right. Are you gonna repave the whole road? Yes. Yeah, it'll, as, as, as part of this, uh, the, the entire stretch, stretch from uh, Ocean Ave to the Spurring will be repaved um, as part of the project. How about uh, the second part from the river to the Yes, yeah, the entire length, yes. Are you thinking of uh, lowering the speed limit or putting in uh, traffic calming um, bumps of some sort? Uh, so, th no, that's that currently not part of the um, proposal. Uh, the the town don't set speed limits within, within the town, that's all set by the DOT. Um, so I think it's the entire length is currently 35 miles an hour. Um, I don't see that changing. Uh, I don't see them lowering that any lower than that. Uh, but uh, we are aware there, there are some speed issues out there. And I have another question. Uh, if you're going to be repaving the whole thing, uh, is there any, has been there any, been any thought about connecting to the town uh, sewer? Um, <laughs> so I, I, I can't answer that. That's, that, that's, a, that's a question for the Sanitary District, unfortunately. Um, I'm not aware of any current plans um, for them to extend that. I, I know there's, well, <laughs> there's a couple of folks in here that, that would really like that, um, but unfortunately that's not. Um, and I guess I will add, we have reached out to the Sanitary District and they have said there are no plans to extend it. So that's something we do with all um, construction projects is reaching out to the utilities. Um, so the sanitary district has been aware of this project and we've, we've asked them to look into it and um, the response that we just got back to was that they don't have any plans in the near future to extend sewer, definitely not prior to our project. You have a question? Uh, yes, could you show phase two please? Yep. And also, are the measurements, is the center line going to be pretty much the existing center line now? Uh, I think there's... It does shift uh, a bit, uh, but we did try to hold the existing center line. Um, you can see uh, the existing road is faded underneath the, our old uh, proposal. A question on the plans. What is the actual width? Is the gray areas? What's this double line behind you? So the... Uh, we you stop this, 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 this song the, line. Yeah, that other line is the right-of-way line. Right. That's the edge of the right-of-way, and then the, the shaded area is going to be the edge of paint. The edge of paint. Yes. So this is actually the edge of paint. Yes. Okay. Including the shoulder? Yes. Uh, well, what... It, uh, um, does it include the shoulder or... No, there would be a dashed line. I think there is a dashed line. So no, no. Okay. So everything in those lines will be paid. Uh, the, the gray uh, um, hashed area would be paid. 
Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, is Lake underground and underground? Um, that I don't know. I, I don't know what is um, out there right now. I do know. No fiber. No, no okay. Fiber. There's no fiber. There are several companies in town right now. Um, I'm not aware of any out um, on Spoink Road, but there is. There are several companies uh, installing fiber at the moment. Unfortunately, it's mostly in this area, um, in the uh, kind of Oak Hill area. Um, I, I'm hopeful that yeah, one day they will. I think it'll be, they'll would probably be overground um, in that area rather than trying to bury it. Um, <laughs> bury it. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's yes. yeah. There's the, there's no plan for that. Go ahead. You mentioned about lowering that hill that's close to uh, Sawyer and that's really that's dangerous. Do you have any idea how far are you plan on coming down? I believe it was a foot to a foot and a half. Um, I can get that number, that exact number. So right. I watched that in your early sign. You just, just say about a foot, a foot and a half from down? Yeah. Um, you know, we need, need to uh, maintain um, the connection to existing driveways in the area um, and a separate grade. Um, another uh, issue in that corner is some of the vegetation. Um, uh, on, on the, we're looking right at the intersection. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping to obtain some easements from that property owner to, so the town can maintain that area and complete some vegetation. Okay. Have two questions. First was um, on the designation of the road. I thought it was designated as a class of our, our state road, not a town road. So this this section is the town road. So it the is. section closest to uh, Black Point Road, so <coughs> from Black Point to just beyond Piper Shores. Is state, and then state. the rest, and the okay. rest of it is, is the town. And then the second question is, of the existing culverts that are shown on your prints, are they all going to be replaced, or just the cross culverts? Are they marked up separately? The ones like the driveway culverts. Yeah, yeah. Oh. there's some because they're all block, blocked up. Yeah, we would look to um, clean them out um, where we can salvage them, salvage them. Um, where we need to replace them, we would. Um, that would probably be a field determination. But, but that, based on mitigation issues for the flood? Yeah, if it's, I mean, if it's completely blocked and we can't um, <coughs> clean it out, you know, we would need to replace it. But, yeah. okay. um, the, the ones that um, Stephen was talking about were the cross culverts, yep. and of those, we're not replacing all of them. I think it was five. Think there was five. <laughs> When this hill road intersection, I Sorry. find it can be pretty difficult to navigate, especially if you're taking a left to the cyclist. Has there been any consideration of the a flashing light or something? I, I mean, that's a very busy intersection. And it's, uh, at Pleasant Hill? Yeah, I mean, I know people probably are in favor of more lights in town. <laughs> Um, it, it hasn't been considered, but it's it, it's probably it's something worth worth us taking into. I believe we're putting conduit though while we're digging it up, so that in future, if, you know, if it's a pedestrian crossing or something in the future, so we're trying to plan for the unknown. So um, I believe we're putting conduit across that section for future use, um, and then also that would include any kind of flashing light or anything like that, even would go through DOT, they um, have the jurisdiction over that. So we'd have to meet certain warrants um, and be a high enough safety concern, like a high crash location, in order to even um, be considered by the state. What do you mean by a flashing light? Do you mean like a... Yeah, you know, like a, you know, be okay. flashing red to um, uh, Pleasant Hill Road and yellow to Spurlemink Road, you know, because it, it's a stop sign yeah. for and I know that the state um, DOT is starting to shy away from those and what they're, I think you'll find happening more and more is they're lighting the stop signs and you'll see more lit stop signs and flashing um, advanced warning signs and things like that. Yeah, I, mean, um, I don't know if it would even slow people down or I, mean, yeah. I, I don't know that people are going through the stop sign. You know, it's, it's I just lit the only way is that people go to the stop sign. People make a left turn, not stop. If people make a right turn, they'll make a left turn. Correct. I never left traffic. Sorry, I skipped over you. When the surveyors were out last summer doing the survey, 
I don't, and this might have nothing to do with it, but Portland Water District showed up at one of my homes and they were marking for dig safe to come out and said about gas lines. Are we having gas lines put in? Ah, uh, I'm not aware of any no. gas lines. No. That, right, no. right, 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 all the utility companies come out, whether their utilities are there or not. Yeah. Because by law, they have to mark the utility. If there's no utility, they have to say no utility. So they have to mark the road, even though there's no utility. So the contract is no. All right. So the guy told me maybe he was marking it for a gas line to go in. But it was marking for gas lines to go in. Yeah. We don't have it. No, we don't no. get gas. <clears throat> no. The, so Portland Water District came out to my grandmother's house. And they were Mac and it said for Dick's sake for but and it was the same day the surveyors were there surveying the road. I think yeah. somebody I think they probably just kind of misinformed you okay. accidentally because they were marking it because they have to to, to show that there is no gas. And, and what do you do with a house sitting almost on the road down with a four foot? My grandmother's yeah, house. Yeah. My, my, my grandmother's house is almost on the white line. Okay, well, that's something we can uh, probably look at together. Yeah. And as it is when they're plowing, the snow hits the house. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how close it is. And plus, we've got that gully. Is that coming up? I don't believe that gully. The main gully that's going to be The main gully that goes, you know, John, past that house. Yeah. Towards I, Kate, it goes down. And that's flooded before. Yeah. And I think that's one of the sections that's being brought up with that for the flooding. Um, so when we look at the maps, we can catch it. Okay. Yeah, these, these plans are preliminary. We really wanted to collect feedback from the community, the people that would be affected, before we got into the final design. So if there's an issue with the horizontal alignment being too close to a home, we want to know that so we can alter our plans for the final design. And we can also like work with individual um, property owners too to start looking at whether you know a screen, but vegetation, fencing, anything that like could be, be some sort of barrier if needed in certain areas. We have well, we have a stone wall now, but that's going to go because and there's really nothing. There's, there's no room. there's no room to even walk beside her house to get down over safely anyway. There's only people do, but yeah. and. Um, yeah. So I know, I know it's like yeah. it's not even it's not two feet there. No. There's like two inches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's there's not much room at all. There's none. That's a little Um on this forty nine and a half feet right away, the green lines on the edge are built out level, correct? Is that uh that it's there? Well, it's going to depend on where it is. I mean, some of those okay. some of those sections have some pretty uh, deep ditches. Um, yeah, that's the reason I ask is about where the two foot mark is. I, there's a rolling down my lawn, and I have a small wall there. So, if you, if you go up straight, you're going to be almost half of that section. So okay. Yeah. So I the 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 green bed is is it's going to vary a lot um, along that whole section. It makes sense if we wanted to get an idea how far you're coming into the property to measure basically 17 feet from the center line, exactly like what it's left, more than two. That gives us an idea of where we probably would end up. I just kind of get it, wanted to get a feel for how far you're going to come on the property. Mm -hmm. and if that makes sense if we measured 17 feet from the center line? Um, so I. <coughs> We don't know for sure. There's going to be some sections where the road right now, the center line is right in the middle of the right of way, and there's, there's going to be some where it isn't. Um, so that, that's going to be that's going to vary depending on where we are. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we do try and put the roads right in the middle of, of the right of way. Um, obviously, there are going to be you know locations where that's that's not practical, and we have to we have to deviate from that. But for the most part, yes, we try and put that in the middle. I'll just just say, say that uh, in the design. <coughs> we have the ability to move the roadway within the right of way. So the right of way is larger than the roadway. So it might be right up against a <coughs> embankment, but we, during the design, shift that over to still be within the right of way and move it away from some of the things that we don't want to So we've kind of done that as best we can. 
But I think you know tonight's important that we get the feedback so we can sort of refine that piece of paper. You had a question, and I'll go to this side of the room because I think you know, I missed some. I'm, I'm here with two hats on. Um, one is on a cyclist, and I ride from Crab's Neck to Portland Headlight a lot. And uh, this section is by far the worst, mm -hmm. by far the worst. And what you what you want to do here, it strikes me as, as great, and I think it'll make it a lot better. Even the fact that it's new pavement. Right now, there are so many potholes and so many irregularities that I'm on a road bike, and a car can go through those potholes and irregularities, but I can't mm -hmm. uh, without throwing myself off the bike. So I may have to be wandering around a little bit just to avoid the, the irregularities in the road. And this is going to go a long way, a long way to uh, um, uh, make it better. So I, I really applaud that the cyclists are getting as much of your attention because uh, I'm one of them and I'm 76 years old and, and uh, hope to be cycling for another 10 years. And the second hand is I'm moving into that new development of Piper Shores next year. And I know that that's a quarter mile south of, of where this project ends. But there's going to be a crosswalk there. And there are going to be 100 seniors, like me, on the, on the uh, uh, inland side of the road, who at times are going to want to cross over to the ocean side of the road and go over to the, to the uh, Piper Shores campus um, or, or to walk into Higgins Beach to walk their dogs on the, on the beach or whatever. Uh, so far, the state has been unwilling to put a blinking crosswalk in there. They've been unwilling to reduce the speed limit from 35, which it is up to Ocean Ave. To I believe they have just changed that Pardon? recently. I said I believe they have just changed that speed limit recently, within the last month or so. Um, it's down to 40. Oh, to 40. I understand okay. that to yep. put a, cro a blinking cross light, uh, like you have on, on Black Rock Road at, at uh, Eastern the Eastern Trail, it has to come down to 35. So um, I know that you are not in charge of those decisions, but uh, next year, starting about this time, you're going to have 100 seniors. Um, they don't cross the road at the highest speed. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the best hearing. They don't have the best eyesight. I'm just asking, you know. <laughs> Asked a lot of the people at the room. Well, so, in conjunction, is there any plans to extend the sidewalk down toward Piper Shores or to do anything with the shoulders there? Because that stretch is pretty dangerous, particularly on what I call the north side, and especially you know, fall, winter, spring, because it gets really icy and slushy, and there's no way to transit along there without being in the traffic lanes. So I, I guess I, I'm going to jump in just from the planning board perspective because Piper Shores, um, when they went through the planning board process, it was definitely a point of conversation with the planning board members um, talking about that crossing. And to your point, is um, town staff since then has been advocating to try to get something. I know we started with a refuge island in the center of that to do traffic calming to try to get halfway across the road and then the other half with the blinking light. That was originally the, the scope. Um, that got carried back because of DOT or Federal Highway for that matter, it's even beyond them, that it's not safe to um, put something in, someone in a crosswalk with high speeds of traffic. So if the speed limit is too high. So you're kind of inviting people to cross at a location that they deem not safe to cross. Right. So there's, um, steps that have to happen, and so it's really about prioritizing how that happens. Um, I know Piper Shores has also um, contributed money towards the sidewalk uh, multimodal account the town has, and that's where some of the acorn sidewalk happened. And as we start building that pot more and more with developers such as Piper Shores, um, it's really about town council prioritizing what is the next kind of um, what's the next project for those multimodal account? Um, it can be a transit bus shelter. It could be a sidewalk, as you but said, from Piper Shores to Ocean, Ocean Ave. There's, so it's really about Shoulder. prioritizing really. it. So I guess that's what I would speak to is um, if there are concerns, it's, it's, it's how um, it gets prioritized. It's through council and then staff 
um, implement that money towards construction. And I think Acorn um, Sidewalk is an example of that. They're building a trail from just across from the meadow section yes. into the main section of Piper Shore. And that was, yes, the planning board's right. discussions right. with that. Yep. Um, and I think that's going to be the one that gets the most heavily used mm -hmm. because it'll be people in one section of Piper Shores going to facilities in the other section of Piper Shores and pools and this and all that. Um, but it's just getting across the bridge. That's yeah. the challenge. That's the challenge. So, I know you don't have the power to change it. I just wanted to be a voice for your know. And I know, like you said, it was a point of conversation with planning board, and I know part of the conversation with Piper Shores was at, at those that are um, less likely to do that walk, there was constant bus sh shuttles they were talking about back and forth between the two campuses. So um, they were trying to look at making sure that there's still that connection, but then other opportunities for those that don't want to make that trek. Okay. I just wanted to raise the issue, I, I know you can't resolve, I don't want to take any more than you time, but, but as a cyclist, I love this, I love this. So what do we do to get go shoulder area there along that road? Not, I mean, this isn't a fight for shores issue, it's the general safety um, of cycling, pedestrians, yep. and I think owners, walkers at all in you know, that section. There was um, a town-wide survey that happened where um, bike and pedestrian facilities ranked pretty high in need by the residents in Scarborough, and that's where how I think we um, were able to get this part funded. And so I would just say the more that council hears that that's a priority, the more of these projects we can fund. Um, and also, I would just say staff is always looking for grant opportunities that we constantly do to try to offset that cost. So that's always enticing too, to try to stretch our money as far as we can. This, unfortunately, we did not, but um, council still felt the importance. So I think the more they hear from residents that bike and head is um, a high priority in town, it'll be, um, I would say, maybe there's a phase three coming. <laughs> right? Yep. If that's yep. what the if that's what council hears as is important. Next question for you. Pleasant Hill. When you rewind the road, you repaid it for about ten years. I'm sorry. On Pleasant Hill Road. Yeah. You repaid it about ten years ago. You missed a perfect update the park line. Yeah. But the intersection when you went off the spur of Pleasant Hill, the white line's almost like a curve. There is no place where anything going on. That white line almost touches the curve. Are you going to prove that in are you saying on Pleasant? I'm sorry, I Pleasant, didn't hear all of that. Uh, Pleasant Hill intersection spur. Right, you're saying on Pleasant Spurling. Hill Road. They make the right on Pleasant Hill. Yeah. There is no right. It's the white line. Yeah. It's almost always the curve. And I guess that's I guess a good example of at the time we did Pleasant Hill Road, um, as you know, closer to Route One, the focus was on widened shoulders, and that was something we heard from council as in those kind of settings, we want to enhance. The, the paved shoulders. When um, we got partial funding for paving through our regional uh, partners tax, um, it was about stretching the dollar to try to get it there, and it was not um, as high a priority at that time. Okay. I think now what the council is hearing is a priority. Because also, the entire section goes in and curb it now. So trucks cut that corner, real on that curb. Because mm -hmm. my girl joined the corner. Terrified after evacuation sign, then how many times you have to replace that yeah. because they hit it? Yeah, we find that a lot with, um, I don't know if anybody in the back is it at any kind of radius point where people are trying to take the higher speed. Yeah, it, you end up going, you see tire tracks off the edge of pavement, and then if we're just filling it, that in with more pavement, it just winds it and winds it and winds it. So it's really about trying to control that and bring that in maybe with some paint markings and things like that, yeah, which are also the curtain, controlled as speed. The curtain would stop at that real mark. You just have to continue the curtain around. Right. That's, if you stop right at the corner, it's the curtain around the corner. Okay. If there was a curtain of two or three inches, concrete curtain that you put less for less for down, it would stop a lot of it. So he was just talking about kind of keeping that corner in um, some sort of barrier, whether it's curved or, or yeah, to try to keep that. I know we are losing signs at that corner. Yeah, we are. They get hit quite often. 
Uh, I think there's a question at the back. Yeah, the long-term devices, the people who live south of Prince of Shores, that happens are very close to the road already. And now you're going to widen the road. I was just out my neighbor's house. We did part of the road to reach their front bedroom because it's so loud. And now you're going to cut into his yard even more, and ours. And then most of our seats will be blue. So we're going to have snow clouds tearing through when we step up into our yard. Like what, what recourse do we have? Like why do we have to have this road wide? And they're all sitting there going, it's in our front yard. But, and so we're on tax base. So um, why don't we have any say in this community? So this affects our, our life, our lifestyle. So for the most part, the road is going to remain within the town's right of way. So we do have a 50-foot right of way. I do know there's a, there's a couple of locations. I don't know specifically the location you're referring to um, that we do have some right of way conflicts where we have um, you know some structures that have encroached in the right of way. Um, we will certainly uh, you know let's listen to your feedback and if, if you're in the uh, when we're going around looking at these plans, if you want to bring some of those concerns to to our attention. And I'm shocked that the town would go down the Sperling Road and think they blocked with all with total disregard to all the people who this is home are practically on that road. I mean that that is to me the huge And then we're talking about project after project after project and our taxes go up and up and up. And we're not questioning this. This is this is a real concern. You almost I'm retired and you almost have to have a job to pay your taxes to the town project. And yet it's just project after project. It's only disregard to our home. So, you know, it's an issue. So this project was, um, you know, something that we, we went ahead with based on community feedback um, and in front of the council. Like, we didn't I, live there. <laughs> you know, we didn't live there. You're talking about people who may not even live in the town who are going to be using a bike path. I'm not against a bike path, but on the Starling Road, that's a road where people's homes are practically on the road. And now you're just, with total disregard to the, the people who are living in the same tax as the car road, we're going to widen a road that's going to infringe on the way they live. So we, uh, as I said, we're doing our best to ensure that the road remains in the right of way. Uh, we do have a 50 foot right of way and I know people often mistake that the edge of pavement is the edge of the road. Um, but I totally understand that. I know the town owns, but why isn't the town saying, this might not be a good idea because the citizens of the town of Scarborough, and plus there's a saw arm there, and that's supposed to be Scarborough's legacy, might be affected by bringing in more traffic and people onto this road. That's what I don't understand. And it's like, what are the well, so this this is um, you know we, it's already a high traveled area for for cyclists, so it's it's already a very popular route. Um, the aim of this project is to to tackle some of those uh, safety concerns, and they're, and they're they're pretty major safety concerns. Right? Well, I, I think uh, in in terms of the speed, um, I mean we are reducing those lanes by. One foot on, on both sides, um, and that is normally a pretty pretty effective uh, traffic carrying measure. Um, in addition to that, you know the, the safety aspect is that now uh, cyclists and pedestrians are going to have four feet um, that you know is, is dedicated to them, and they're not having to share the same lane as. Well, what about the homeowners? I, I I would encourage you that once we kind of break up and go through these maps, if you uh, want to bring those to our attention as to exactly where you are along there and if there's there's ways that we can uh, help mitigate some of your concerns then I think mean, that's that's going to be the best way of, of doing that. I might have done that but you're, you're taking a road again where people are living practically on the road there is no reason. There's no So I mean I drove down that road and I'm like I feel sorry for the people who are actually on the road because they're going to have people speeding to their drive and making a lot of noise and 
Yes. Um, Scott Townsend, we did that. My wife has a 284 lane. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple things. So, you know, I understand all the concerns, um, but this is a road that all of us travel um, by vehicle uh, every day, um, multiple times a day. And there are definitely some safety issues that need to be addressed. So, that's just one point. And the other is um, you'll recognize our home because we are the only ones that currently have a sidewalk in front of it. And, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to let everyone know here that starting in the process, that um, we worked with Mike Shaw and his team at Public Works um, through that whole process and working with the Public Works Department was great. They, uh, on, they were there on site, they took input as far as the aesthetics went. Uh, and overall, it was a very positive experience for Sonny and I um, because we actually did have to give an easement in order for that uh, sidewalk to happen, which we were, you know, at first we were like, oh no, that's interesting. Um, but the more we talked about it and the greater good for the community, uh, we were all on board and, you know, I, I, it's a big win. Everyone in the, the neighborhood of Acorn, uh, the kids that now can safely access the beach, um, you know, there's a lot of gratitude and thanks and it's just fun to see them going down on their scooters and, and being able to safely um, access uh, other aspects of the community. That's Thank you. That's great, I've seen that sidewalk. It's down by the, it's down by the school, right? Yeah, the market. Got it. Yeah. And that's great, and there's a hill there, so the road's not going in or the sidewalk in the future. So it's a little risk of a different situation. I will agree with you, my truck is about to come on it. And this is great. But I, but I do think we need to do a little way for the community to get people to come to this road going through their front door, that almost to their front door. I agree with you, I mean, I wish it were ideal all the way along, because it is a busy road. But there are some other problems. Go ahead. I, is part of your work to address the um, double line or passing line? Uh, it, address it in, in terms of? In changing it or keeping it, I don't know if it's, uh, it's supposed to not be a passing lane and I can tell you that um, people readily pass people that are either going too slow or bikers on the wrong side, which puts at risk homeowners that are coming out of their driveways that in, anticipate there's nobody coming on that side and they're coming at 55 miles an hour. And when it's a straightaway, that's when they do it. Yep. And I, I just didn't know if that's. Uh, I don't <laughs> think we've actually got that far in, in the design, to be honest. Um, I think that's certainly a, a, a good, uh, good point yeah. of feedback uh, for us to consider as we go forward. Okay. Um, obviously, the, the, the lines are the last thing we do as part of a project. So but no, I think that's uh, we'll okay. certainly take that in. The other question I have is um, you mentioned that you've done a study that speed and big trucks and all that. Do you uh, actually, I'm not sure we have done a speed study. I'm not, have we done a speed, I didn't hear the a speed study out on that section of Spurring Road? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, and the, 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 the last question is, do you have um, a record of what the speed limit is on the um, Do you, uh, well, the police department keep track of those records, but yeah, go, go ahead. We, oh. All I can say is at this point, there isn't a high crash location in the project area, but we have that information um, through, like you said, the police department that we can gather as, as part I'd of the I'd be curious because as much as it is it's not, it seems risky to be out there. Mm -hmm. I have yet to hear of any bad accidents anywhere on that road. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's not, <laughs> not, that's a reason not to change it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, where are, the, where are the studies that have come from, what's needed, and, <coughs> and why? I guess all I could say is um, to that, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, this project was part of a study that was done in 2006, and it's been, um, I would say, on, on anything that we talk about with our look-aheads for capital improvement projects, it's been on the radar because of the, even back then, um, the public process we went through um, to develop that transportation study. Um, it was a concern then, 
Um, so we just kept kind of moving this project forward, um, but it hadn't got funded. And I would say, again, I refer back to the survey, it wasn't until the greater population, I would say in Scarborough, started voicing concerns about bike and ped facilities that it, it eventually starts reaching the top. Um, and that's where, um, like I said, this, this isn't a new project by uh, any are means. You, are you speaking specifically for Spurlink? Or yes. are you speaking for Scarborough in general? For, well, I can say this, the spur wink improvements or the issues I said to say that are identified to that Stephen started the presentation with um, were identified as far back and was documented in our 2006 townwide transportation study identifying specifically spur wink issues. Um, and that, like I said, has been carried forward as knowing it's a concern. It has just reached kind of the priority at this point. Um, and we are now just got funded as well from the council to do an update which obviously has been quite some time to do a town-wide transportation study to try to look at what are the next priorities right um so we're finally getting to the 2006 projects um i would say now we're looking at it and holistically through the town and there might be other areas of town that kind of rise to the top and as far as safety concerns, as far as um, the community out, uh, <coughs> need, uh, and or if, that's being voiced. So the safety is looked at as well when you're doing that survey and study, or is it mainly the um, complaints of people? In the 2006 request? study, it, it looked at, like to your point, even back then, looking at um, the geometry of the road. Like from an engineering point of view, you can kind of point out some safety concerns. Um, that you don't need to ride on a bike to know that it's concerning when you have no shoulder, no um, supporting gravel under it, or even off the edge, those type of things. Um, so there was some of that that was done as far back as that project. But if we didn't have all the bicycles there, would we be doing this major thing? It, with all, I have, we have about 30 bicycles that go by on weekends, but are we spending this and infringing on our homes because of all the increase of bicycles that choose to use our road? There is safety concerns with the gully by 191 and up on Sawyer Road, and those concerns go back way back to the 60s when my father was going to move my grandmother's house and the town came by and said, don't move the house because they're going to widen the road, take the gully out, take the hill out back in the 60s, mm -hmm. and they'll move the house because the same house we're talking about is still sitting in the same place, sitting in the same place, almost in the middle of the road. So the safety concerns for Sperling Road has been going on since the 60s. Mm -hmm. And now because, no offense to anybody on bicycles, but now they choose our road for bicycles, our houses are going to be losing frontage or something because my thinking is bicycles. If it's safety concerns for cars and people coming out of Sawyer, Sawyer is bad. The gully is bad. I cannot walk across my street at 191 without standing there listening because a car can come in the gully and you can't see the roof and it's right at your legs when you walk across. So the gully is bad. The road is bad, but we're doing this whole road. Are we doing it for bicycles to come? Because there's so the many that live there. There's both. There's both improvements for cyclists and also for um, motorists. Um, you know, we have several areas where we have Soy Street is a great example. Where I mean, that's that's an improvement for the people that live in that area and have yes. to use that road. Um, same with the gully and, and raising that. So it, it's both, and it's based on it is based on how the road is used. Um, and that's you know that, that drives a lot of what we do is what what do people want and what what are they what are they using um, these roads for? But the taxpayers, I agree. The ones who pay the taxes for us on our road aren't the, all the ones riding the bikes. And I mean, I haven't ridden a bike on our road for the majority. But I also I also know the danger of driving with bikes there and the need to be safe. But how much are we going to lose of our property? To. Well, I think uh, without knowing specifically where, where that is, um, I think that's another good one to, to kind of bring to our attention um, when we go in and look at these plans um, and hopefully 
answer some of those questions and maybe uh, um, you know allay some of your fears as, as to how much we are going to be coming in towards your house. Yeah, I do think you should consider homeowners priority more than bicycles. And when you're taking something, make sure the homeowner doesn't penalize the convenience of bicycles. I mean, we would like to ride bicycles ourselves. And I say would like because I think that area is just too dangerous for some of my skills. We put our bikes in a truck and take it to the Eastern Trail to ride. So I think it would be a big improvement to have something that would be safe for us to ride on too. But uh, we don't want our property damaged in the process. Okay. Uh, question over here. Can you talk about anticipated closures or detours, especially for phase two? Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite hear that. Can you talk about anticipated road closures or detours, particularly for phase two? Um, so we would always try and keep everything to a minimum at this stage. I, I don't really have an answer because it's going to depend on um, the contractor once that once the bid is awarded um, you know, this isn't really a road we can close down uh, just because of you know it's, it's a major uh, route in and out of Cape Elizabeth so um, I don't, it's not practical to close it down for any length of time um, I think what will end up happening is we'll have one way alternating traffic during construction uh, but you know obviously we'll work with whoever the successful contractor is to, to keep any disruption to the middle I have a stone wall, which is, uh, when the road is wide, it's gonna bring the road bed right up to the stone wall. And I have concern about snow plows, particularly because I want a, uh, a curve, which uh, doesn't give them a straight line to work with, and uh, uh, my mailbox gets knocked over at least twice a winter. Uh, so I, I, I can almost guarantee that the snow plow is gonna hit that wall uh, because it's right, up, you know, the road goes right up to the wall. I was thinking that if the plows did not plow the bike lane, that might be a good thing for me, and I don't know. You don't need a bike lane in the winter at first. So I'm wondering if that's like an option to get the plows further away from the property. Um, so, and you're right, the bike lanes don't typically get used as much in the winter, so they, um, you know, I, I would, when we are plowing in the winter, we would we're not, probably not going to push it all the way back off the road, um, like we maybe do right now. Um, and that'll, you know, that, that will help protect your mailbox because it's going to be further away from, from the travel lane. I'm more worried about the stone wall than I am about the mailbox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can it be moved as part of the project if it's Yeah, and I think these up? are really good questions for you to point out to staff that are here when we look at the plan. And actually, our, our goal was to market your stone wall, we talk about it with you, and then be able to um, go back and kind of revisit it, and then kind of connect with individual property owners <coughs> about those kind of things, whether it needs to be moved, whether we need, are moving the road, whether we're changing the grade to help ease kind of that slope, things like that. But we can't really, I guess, probably it's not as beneficial to talk as a large group about individual stone walls, but we would love to hear that are you going to move utility poles? Some yeah. utility poles, um, we really were targeting the uh, stringer poles or the tension poles that are across the road, um, not the ones carrying the uh, overhead power lines, but the ones that are keeping the, the support pole, their support poles. So those would be moved a little bit further away from the edge of uh, the travel way, um, just to meet uh, DOT. Yeah, I don't know if that would do it. I run on the road every day, so I'm very familiar with the layout. And I know that a lot of the poles are already close to the road, and they're not, you know, uh, racing poles, or swimming poles, whatever like I said, they're the, the actual utility pole, stuff like that. The, the bike lane is going to end up, you know, with a hole in the middle of it, unless they get moved. So I'm planning on dealing with that. I think in those cases, it's the center line of the road may be shifted okay. to avoid that. So, yeah. so the way that's designed, like I said before, that center line can shift within the right of the way to be extended. Yeah. Yeah. Stay within the right of the way. I don't know if that you know, can happen all over, but it's certainly a good direction. So when you look at your property and see what you have to pay, they live in this is where you can do the wall. 
Yeah, it's not really my property in this case. It was a utility pole. It's all the whole length of the road. There are a bunch of poles in there. So it's like too close to the road now. The question I have, you mentioned oh, stone wall. If you had room by stone wall, you wouldn't pay for that. And that's thousands and thousands of dollars. You're not talking a small amount. You need $15,000 for these small walls. Well, that's why avoidance is the first objective. And then that would be accrued by the project, any costs associated to make anybody whole, anybody's front, um, any side slope, even if within the right of way, it's doing, um, you know, loam, seed, new grass, those type of things. It's all part of the project that to try to make every property or whole, you know, all along the way. So is this a done deal? Is this? Is this, set, is this happening? Is this a, is this set yeah. in stone that it's going to yeah, happen? No matter this what, is, this is being no approved. No matter what any of us. This is being approved by the council to to proceed. But we are at preliminary plans. Yes. I guess I think that was stated earlier. Um, so they can be. We have we're a long way from final by getting back and adjusting the plans. There's a project. It's trying to get to that final project. But but. The bottom line is no matter what we really say, this is going to happen, and then you got to fine tune it, is what you're saying. And, yeah, and you do, I would say the property owners do have a say. I mean, there's, we would hope to work with property owners that have conflicts with the right of way, but um, at the end of the day, it's your property. And so we can't, I, the town has no interest in taking property at all. So we want to work with people or we work around obstacles. That means pushing um, the new, you know, the road alignment or different things to avoid those conflicts. Question? My question is uh, more on elevation and, you know, how that's going to work. Um, you know, you're going to be adding to valleys and cutting down yeah. folks and, you know, the drilling and um, any blasting or, uh, you know, to, I guess, the wind. <laughs> If it's all ledge, you know, that's why we don't have sewer up there. Um, well, we never will. But yeah, I just wanted to think maybe it's too preliminary to, to We, we try to closely match the existing grade. Um, yeah. It would just make the, the tiny <laughs> driveways a lot easier at intersections. Um, there are some areas that we did bring up or cut down, um, such as by the um, Sperling, or the, excuse me, the Sawyer Road intersection. Yeah. Um, and the, the area that was subject to flooding, we're looking at uh, increasing the elevation there. Um, you're right, there is a considerable amount of ledge. We had some at Geoengineering Services do some borings along uh, the length of Sperling where we're um, proposing the project. And we do have boring logs um, um, that uh, document where there is a high ledge and also noted on the survey plans uh, outcrops. So we have some ideas of, of where that those uh, areas are. Um, we would uh, hope to avoid blasting, if anything would be a rock hammer on an excavator. Um, but again, that would be, you know, we would put that to the contractor and, and see what they come up with. Yeah. Uh, but that is um, certainly a consideration for that. So I think I'll, I'll take a couple more questions. Uh, and then I think it would probably be um, a good idea at this point to, to kind of break up as a group and we can go around um, and look at the plans and then hopefully with, with the four of us if there's more more questions that are, are property specific that we can answer those rather than um you know everyone having to uh um sit through those but i'll ask a couple more questions so if, if you want to go ahead thank you i have a couple questions and one is i would ask everyone here how many of you would feel safe right now taking a short walk from your property along this road you felt like you wanted to go for a walk. How many of you are able to take a walk at night time? Out, out your front door. Right, right. So I want to thank you not only for providing this for cyclists who probably provide a lot of service for us in the community. They're probably teachers, doctors, nurses. They're not just people on bikes. They're people that live in Scarborough that pay taxes and, and enjoy riding along there. But also for us that I, could, I can't step out my door and take a walk during the day and be safe. So it's for us too, um, for us that, that live along this road. Um, another, another concern I've heard is we're talking about the speed of the traffic 
now. And it sounds like we're helpless in terms of these 50 ton trucks full of dirt going 50 miles an hour at seven o'clock in the morning down our road. Is there anything that we, you know, Prowlsnack has a Scarborough police officer on that road all the time. I ride my bike there. There's always a police officer there. Yeah. What can we do to slow the traffic down now? Speed bumps. Pardon me? <coughs> yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, what do I do? I talk to the police department and say, it, it so is. you can I, sit in my driveway and make your quota for a month? <laughs> <laughs> one day. I, I right? did have a speed study done. Complained about safety a year ago, and they did address it. They came over. And they did sit in our driveway and pulled over quite a few people. I have a packet at home where they printed it out and gave me the speed study. Uh, they hooked up a black box right on the telephone pole right in front of our home, and um, they, were, they were great as far as that. And it's scary to see the speeds. It showed every single car that went by and speed recorded and the time. I think the highest was around seven. So we're, we're, we feel, I mean, if this is a safety issue, first of all, we have to get the word out there that if you speed on this road, you're going to get a ticket. And then let's widen it. The word's out that the police are out there ticketing people on this road. You can make it as wide as you want, but if those trucks are still going 50, 60 miles an hour, it doesn't matter how wide you make the bike lane. Yeah, I it's think there's, the, 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 there's a, a, a speed enforcement issue. Uh, that is uh, th that is the police department. Um, okay. Unfortunately, they weren't able to come tonight. Um, but I, I think you know that that is, uh, and clearly from the speed study that was done uh, last year, I think you said um, that there is issues. And if, if they've identified those issues, then um, that would be something that we can discuss internally with with the police department. And yeah, if we could work together with them with this project. <laughs> Once you get the speed trap set up and people know they're going to get nailed, then they're going to start slowing down. Especially the companies with these huge trucks. But, they, but I thank you for trying to make it safe for not only people in the community, but also for us that want to step outside and take a walk <coughs> and feel safe just walking outside of our, down our street or taking a jog down the street. Can, one more question is, what impacts the anticipated start dates for these projects? You said spring or fall, what? what? So once we uh, award the contract, um, it'll be based on their scheduling. Um, so part of the reason why we're going out in the fall of this year is to hopefully get on um, whoever the successful, uh, successful contractor is, uh, get on their schedule and that'll allow us to, um, you know, hopefully be right from the start uh, in the spring uh, to get on. That, that, that's, that's my hope. Um, if we do miss that and we're not on their schedule, then I, it probably will get pushed off till the fall of next year. Um, I don't want to be doing this during the summer uh, just because of, of how busy it is down there. Might slow people down. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just had a couple points on it. So no, number one, you guys are talking about speed, and we all agree that it's too fast, and we also heard that it's the Department of Transportation have the jurisdiction over the uh, speed limit. One of the things I can tell you from this is the current travel lane is painted at 12 feet wide. Um, they're going to narrow it to 11. Anytime you narrow the paint, it will naturally slow traffic. Um, it, think of it like if you're on the highway and you're coming up and they're doing construction and they've got those concrete jer jersey barriers, even though there's more than enough room for you to go through them, you're not going through them at the same speed you were when the so I think there'll probably be some natural um, slowing of speed with that. The other pack is just regarding the bicycle aspect of it. Um, you know, this, this project is clearly not for cyclists, because if it, if it was, first of all, the national guidelines for bike safety lanes is, is five feet, not four, and they would be, any cyclist that is designing this specifically for cycling, they would be paid in the shoulders if you have a five to six foot cycling lane. So, you know, it's, it's meant to sort of uh, better the community, not just one user group. And then with that, just a point of education, that a bicycle on the road has the same exact rights as you as the car driver. So when you leave your driveway to go down Spurwink Road, and there's a 
bicyclists there, they have the same right to be on that road. They can take the lane if they can do it safely. There's a whole other bits of, of, of rules that go in, into that. But I think it's a common misconception that people in cars don't think that the cyclists have the same right to be on that road as they do. But they also have to follow the rules. They, they yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, they do. that's a bigger problem because yeah. the community at large doesn't understand that they have the same rights. So as a cyclist, you have to look out for your best interest and your safety because you're not protected the same way that the driver is. So in doing that, sometimes you have to make judgment calls. But that's a whole different conversation for another day. Uh, either, either way, so that, those are my only two points. Thank you. Take uh, two more questions. I'll, I'll go over here. Um, so there's four of you and lots of us. So is there a super group captured this? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If uh, you're not able to get any, any of your questions answered tonight, um, we will leave you, um, the, the town website has all our contact details on, but we'll make sure that those are um, available here b before so as well. Contact you um, yeah, you can contact me, um, and if I can't answer the question um, straight off, then I will, I'll get back to you and, and with an answer. Yeah. <coughs> um, go ahead. Wait, is there um, lighting that's going to be added to the, added to the road, and do you have any sense of how many trees on the road are going to have to be So in terms of lighting, I don't think we've got any proposals um, initially. Uh, we do have a, a, a lightning ordinance, um, but I don't know if there would be any additional lights that would qualify under that. Um, and in terms of trees, I think there probably will be some that are impacted. I don't know. Exactly. There's uh, some minor tree clearing. Um, I don't have a tr uh, tree count of, uh, at this moment, but there, there is some uh, on the wooded areas of the right way. We'll be able to see that on the. Yeah, there's a, a bold uh, tree line. Um, and I guess I would, I would just add about street lights. If, you, if there are concerns or comments, it'd be good to note those as well, because when we did um, the town wide retrofit and we, we actually bought the street lights and changed them all to LED street lights. We actually did an inventory on all of our streets and spur wing, I believe we added a couple looking at different curves in the road or intersections to make sure at any curb or intersection there was adequate street light and that's really the intent of our street light board uh, policy. So it would be good if um, to know if there are other ones that we will Missed because that could have happened. Um, if we just note those, there is a process that we could look at individual locations. All right, well, thank you. Um, so, as I say, if you want to, uh, you can get up and start uh, looking at the maps, and we'll be uh, mingling among everyone and we can help answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you.